the pressurization system, on the A330-340 aircraft family. Normally operates automatically, to adjust the cabin altitude, and its rate of change, to ensure maximum passenger comfort and safety. The pressurized areas are the cockpit, the avionics compartment, the cabin, and the cargo compartments. The concept of the system is simple. Air is supplied from the air conditioning packs to the pressurized areas. Two outflow valves are used to regulate the amount of air allowed to escape from the pressurized areas. Automatic control of the outflow valves is provided by two cabin pressure controllers. Each controller has an electric motor to move each outflow valve. The combination of a controller and two motors is known as a system. Only one system will operate at any one time, with the other system acting as backup. A third motor is installed on each outflow valve for use in the event of failure of both automatic systems. A manual input is required to open or close the outflow valve. Let us look at the operation of the outflow valves for an aircraft in cruise and what happens to cabin differential pressure, cabin altitude and cabin vertical speed. We will start with cabin differential pressure. If the outflow valves are closed or only allowing a small amount of air to escape, then the cabin differential pressure will increase. Now let's look at what happens to cabin altitude. If the outflow valves are closed, or only allowing a small amount of air to escape, then the cabin altitude will descend. We can also see what the cabin is doing by referring to the vertical speed. When the outflow valves close, the cabin altitude will decrease with a negative vertical speed. If the outflow valves are fully open, a lot of air is allowed to escape. The cabin pressure will decrease, the cabin altitude will increase with a positive vertical speed. Depending on the version, two or three safety valves are installed to avoid a cabin differential pressure from going too high or too low. One negative relief valve is installed below the cabin floor but above the flotation line. It is aft of left cabin door one and will assist the safety valves to avoid a cabin differential pressure from going too low. Note: On a 34600, three safety valves are installed and, in addition to the same negative relief valve as installed on the A330 and the A340, a second one is installed after the left cabin door too. The crew can monitor all cabin pressure functions on the ECAM cabin pressurization page. Let's look at the information associated with the pressurization system that is presented on the cabin pressurization page. The pack indication is displayed green when the associated pack is on. The outflow valve's position can be monitored and the system controller in use is shown. There is a single indication, safety valves. We will look at how this indication changes later in the module. Note, the negative relief valve is not represented. The cabin differential pressure, or delta P, shows the difference in PSI between the cabin pressure and external pressure. This differential pressure will be at zero on the ground and increase as the aircraft climbs. The cabin vertical speed shows the rate of change of cabin altitude in feet per minute. For passenger comfort, the pressurization system will aim to keep this rate of change as small as possible. The cabin altitude is also shown. 
the vent extract and ground cooling indications are associated with the avionics ventilation system and will be discussed later. On the ECAM cruise page, there are indications of cabin differential pressure, cabin vertical speed, and cabin altitude. The cabin vertical speed is also indicated on the ECAM door page. Note that this indication is only displayed when the aircraft is airborne. On the overhead panel, the cabin pressurization panel contains controls to operate the pressurization system. Under normal conditions, no pilot action is required on this panel during flight. The pressurization mode cell push button switch has two settings automatic and manual. The normal position for this push button switch is lights out. In this position the pressurization system is in automatic mode. The landing elevation selector normally remains in the auto position. Landing elevation, which is required by the pressurization system, is then provided by the FMGS based upon elevation of the destination airport. If the landing elevation is not available from the FMGS, then it can be set manually using the selector. The guarded ditching switch is provided to close all valves below the waterline so that the aircraft can be sealed in the unlikely event of a ditching. For a better understanding of how the pressurization system works, we will go through a normal flight profile, paying particular attention to the ECAM indications. The aircraft is on the ground before the flight. We can now look at the ECAM cabin pressurization page. Observe that the outflow valves are fully open. The differential pressure is zero. There is no vertical speed and the cabin altitude is indicating the field elevation of the departure airfield. During the takeoff roll, the system controller signals the outflow valves to close slightly in order to pre-pressurize the aircraft. This is to avoid a pressure surge at rotation. At liftoff, the controller initiates the climb phase and cabin altitude varies according to a fixed law taking into account the actual rate of climb of the aircraft. The outflow valves will move as required to achieve this. Once established in cruise, the cabin altitude and differential pressure will remain steady. The outflow valves will move as required to maintain the cabin altitude. In the example shown, the aircraft is in cruise at 35,000 feet. Notice the values of differential pressure and cabin altitude. During the descent phase, the pressure rate is optimized so that the cabin reaches landing field pressure just prior to landing. Note, for passenger comfort, the automatic function will limit the rate of cabin descent to a maximum of approximately 750 feet per minute. At touchdown, the cabin altitude should be at the airfield elevation and there should be no differential pressure. To ensure this, just after landing, the outflow valves are fully opened by the system controller. Once the outflow valves are fully open, there is an automatic changeover of the system controllers in preparation for the next flight. This happens so that both systems are used equally. Let us now review some failure cases. The caution cab press landing elevation fault is telling that the pressurization system has, for some reasons, lost the landing elevation data normally supplied by the FMGS. Notice that the landing elevation details on the system page are blank. Read the actions on the engine warning display. In this case, the procedure asks to set the landing field elevation manually with the landing elevation selector. 
as soon as the selector is moved from the auto position. The action line on the engine warning display clears, and a man message appears on the cab press page. The landing elevation value will also indicate the selected value. To complete this module, let's look at some other abnormal indications and what they mean. If there is an excessive positive or negative differential pressure, one of the safety valves will operate. An ECAM caution cabin pressure safety valve open is generated and the safety valve indication on the cabin pressurization page changes to amber. If on ground and in case of abnormal residual pressure when speed is below 100 knots or after all engines are shut down with manual mode selected or with both CPCs failed the residual pressure control unit RPCU automatically controls the outflow valves to open.